Hi, I'm Melissa Maley here with Home Improvement Specialist Todd Hendricks and today we're going to be showing you how to install the zip up under deck system. This system's great, you're going to see it's going to go up fast and it's easy and not only is it going to provide a beautiful ceiling for this patio but it's going to help protect it by draining water away from the house and into a gutter. Now we've installed several of these systems over the last few months and uh, we found that it's a superior product to some of the others on the market. And what we're going to do here now is the first step is we're going to take a few measurements and then show the tool layout that it takes to install the product. The zip up underdecking system was designed for that we wouldn't need a lot of tools to install. These are a pair of shears to cut the panels. We have a cordless impact to screw the uh, main rails up. Another one here, a tape measure, a jip knife for cutting the length of the panels, a uh, chalk line to get the first row straight, and a large square to draw a straight line. Now if you have an electric miter box that makes the project go a lot faster and smoother, but you can get by with these tools here. The system was designed for the do-it-yourselfer, so it was meant to be as easy as possible. Because of that, there's only three pieces. So the first piece we're going to work with is the wall trim. The wall trim goes around the perimeter of your deck and it's going to create a frame for the system. All the other components are going to snap inside the wall trim. The second piece is the panel. This is the decorative finish of the system. It's about a foot wide and it comes in two different finishes. We've got a serrated and a smooth. We'll be working with the serrated today. And the final piece is the main rail. The main rail is a sturdy I-beam and it's going to provide the structure and the support of the system. We will show you how they all interlock to create a watertight system as we go along. So let's see how Todd is doing. All right, our next step is to install our pitch rail, which we carry in a half inch thick and a one inch thick product. And the reason we do that is zip up is designed to pitch eighth inch per foot, which equates to half inch and four feet. And then it progresses as the deck goes down. This deck happens to be 16 feet, so we're gonna end up all the way to a two inch spacer once we get out to the end. So what we do is we snap a line at four feet, 8 feet, 12 feet, and 16 feet, and we install these out starting with a half, then a one inch, then an inch and a half, and then a two inch. We had some extra lumber laying around in the project, so we decided to rip our own spacers on this one just to utilize some of the lumber that was left over. This is our set of half inch, one inch, inch and a half, and two inch spacers made out of cedar. You can use cedar or treat it if you're gonna rip your own. Ours are a PVC product, which obviously will never rot. Now we're gonna mark four foot out from the house to establish a line for our pitch spacers. Then we'll move down to the other end and do the same thing over there. Now we're gonna take a string line with blue chalk. We're gonna snap a line from end to end to establish the first line of our pitch rails. All right, we're gonna actually start installing the pitch spacers up on the ceiling of the deck and Melissa will explain to everybody out there what we're doing as we're doing it. We're going to start with a half inch on our chalk line that we already pre-labeled. Now you want to use a screw that's longer than your deepest pitch. So we're going out to a two inch pitch, therefore we're going to need a three and a quarter inch deck screw. Alright, and now we have all our pitching set up. So as you can see, starting from the house, again we're coming out four feet and you're looking at the half inch rail, another four feet. So at eight foot, we have the one inch rail, 12 foot, we've extended out one and a half, ending at two inch pitch rail. This has created a downward slope away from the house. So all the water is going to gather into the panels and flow down toward our lowest point. Now what you can see as Todd is doing is he is installing the wall trim, which is the first step of installing the actual zip up under deck system. The wall trim can be either mounted directly into the wall as Todd is doing here, and if you have like a concrete board or your wall surface is difficult, it may require some pre-drilling. Or you can shoot a screw up vertically into the deck framing itself. We are choosing to shoot a screw every foot just to make sure that the wall trim is good and secure since the other components of the system are going to snap into it. When you're installing the side wall, wall trim, you want to be sure that it's uptight to the pitch spacers so that it creates the proper slope that we've acquired with putting these up. As you can see on the cement board siding, you can see the slope that goes down towards the uh, eventual gutter that we'll be installing later. Be sure to leave a two inch gap away from the edge of your deck. 
This will allow for a gutter to be mounted up in there. So you do not put your wall trim all the way to the end. Panels are made out of a flexible yet rigid PVC vinyl, which makes them easy to be cut either by hand by a strong pair of shears, or you can take them to a radial arm saw or miter saw as well. As we talked earlier about the simple tools that it takes to install the zip-up product, um, electric miter box makes the job go a lot smoother, faster, and just a lot easier. When you're cutting the wall trim, we suggest you cut a block of wood that fits inside the trim, as you can see here. It keeps our PVC product from shattering when you cut it. This time of year when it's 75, 80 degrees is not a big issue, but when you start cutting the product as it gets colder, it will shatter when you cut it. This alleviates that and it's a lot safer. All panels come pre-nipped at the end. However, when we trim a panel or you have to cut it to length, you're going to have to nip it back yourself. Set it back about three quarters an inch, just far enough so that it's going to slide easily into the wall trim. So you want to be careful when you're pushing into the beam that you don't push so far that you actually strain or crack the panel. For your first panel, so it can slide in the edge of the wall trim, you're not only going to have to nip one end, but you're going to have to remove the entire bead off one side of the panel. You just score along the edge of the bead and then gently rock to remove the panel, being careful not to split or crack the panel. With the deck being a, a round number, it's right at 34 feet, these, these panels do gain a little bit on each panel, like a 16th. So in order to not have either a really small panel at the end or end up with a one inch rip at the end of this one, we're gonna cut an inch off of this panel to kind of alleviate that. Now that we have our wall trim up, it's time to install our first panel. We're gonna start with the end that we already cut off first because that's gonna slide easily into this lip of the wall trim. We're gonna slide the end of the panel into the wall trim here against the house. And we're gonna slide the whole panel over and get it started into the side wall trim. Just holding a little bit of pressure on the back end here and then just work it in. On the main rails, first thing you do is you take it in, lay it flat like this, get it into the wall trim, and then I roll it so it's just over the top of the bead. And now I'm going to snap that in and just work it down the whole panel from one end to the other. And these main rails find their own true center, so there's no measuring. We'll screw this main rail up. with some number eight by one inch stainless steel screws. We started our half inch pitch spacer. You don't want to drive the screw so far that it damages the rail. You just want to snug them up. All right, after the first panel is installed against the wall, we just repeat the same process over and over until we get to the opposite end where we need to start doing some more cutting. Every now and then when you're putting the uh, main rails in, you're going to run into a joist hanger that hangs down. When you do that, you just simply take and you cut the top end off one of these main rails, the distance you need. And then it'll fit over that joist hanger. And you don't lose any strength on these because all the strength is in the bottom of these rails. All right, when you end up with a situation like this where you've got a pitch spacer outside of a wall this close, because we've got our zero back here and this is our four foot pitch spacer. What you've got to do is actually go in the reverse order, level back to this point, make a mark, and that gives you your height for your wall trim because your wall trim won't be at zero here because if, if you put it at zero, it'd be higher than the rest of it and you'd be out of pitch. So that's the way you do it. You go from the reverse angle back to and make a mark. The final thing you have to do is go around the perimeter of your deck anywhere you cut the edge, so all along the wall trim, particularly focusing on the corners with the PVC compatible silicone caulk, and this will ensure that water cannot escape through the edges. Now that all the panels are in, it's time to put the finishing touches to the project. And the last piece is the gutter. You can use uh, conventional gutter, aluminum, or you can use plastic, it doesn't matter. It's whatever you prefer. A great way to finish off the edges while you're installing the gutter, and also to make sure that water doesn't kick back, you have two options. One is to run a bead of silicone along the inside edge, or you take your wall trim, normally installed like this, you simply turn it around, and it will slide in in reverse 
upside down on the panels, and this will help create a waterfall effect into your gutter and prevent splashback. One of the great features about the zip-up underdeck system is that it's not only designed to install quickly and easily, but it's also made to come back down. To do this, I like to use something with a flat edge, just enough that you can slip it under the seal. I like a mini uh, crowbar. Some people can use putty knives or like a really fine edge screwdriver. Something that's gonna fit under there, but not damage or bow out your panel. You need to push up in the middle of the panel just enough to break the seam. And then you slide your tool in that gap. And then you simply repeat on the other side of the panel. Once the seal is broken, gently pull down and the panel comes out. The reason why the ability to remove a panel is such a great feature in our system is it allows it to be taken down to be power washed and provides access to overhead areas in case you need to get maintenance underneath your structure. Retrieve an item that has maybe fallen through the deck or any of your other structural maintenance needs. And that'll wrap up our underdecking project for the day. It's time to start utilizing this great outdoor living space and have all this dry area to use for barbecues and things of that nature. And when you're ready to come in from the outdoors, don't forget to check us out at www.zipupdeck.com and don't forget to like us on Facebook and Twitter.